Church say amen. amen. I know I am. Amen. We all. Yes. We all. You should be leaning. Leaning on the everlasting yes. arm. The arm of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. This morning our scripture reading will be coming from the book of Psalms. The 77th book of Psalms. Beginning at the 11th verse. When you find it, please stand. Also say amen. The 77th book of Psalms, begin reading at the 11th verse. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, I remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also all thy works and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that doeth wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine own redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Judah. Amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. We thank our Lord, thank our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the readers and the hearers of his word. After the choir, Give us a hymn. One of God's servants will go to the throne of grace.
Everlasting to everlasting, our God. Here once again, Father, your humble servant come at this hour. Father, suffer me not to bow in any form or fashion in this sin sick and dying world. But let my chest be beneath my knees, and my knees in some lonely valley where prayers can be heard and mercy can be found. First of all, Father, I would like to thank you for your darling son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Who died on the cross for my sins, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Father, for righteousness. Thank you, Father, for reconciliation. Thank you, thank you Lord, for last night's rest. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for reason, portion, health, and strength, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for food on my table and clothing on my and, Father, bless everyone assembled here, Father. Let their life be a bright and shining star that others may see and ask, what can I do to be saved? Continue, Father, to bless the sick and the settled and lost. Continue to bless the pastor and his family, Father. And now, Lord, and now, Lord, keep my eyes upon the star poles that sit back in keep me striving toward a mark of a high calling, which is Christ Jesus. Father, I will always look up to the hills from whence cometh my help. For my help cometh from the Lord, who rules the heaven and the earth. Father, if thou will withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. All these blessings I pray in Jesus' name.
morning, good morning, Emmanuel. We're so glad to have you with us today. And we have come today to lift him up. Here at Emmanuel Baptist Church, where we are celebrating black history 375, 65 days a year. 365. I want to add on a few more because when the Holy Ghost get in us, we're going to celebrate even more. Because he'll give you much out of less. He knows how to do it. As we come this morning, we're just full of joy to be able to serve a present-day God who's got everything that you need, no matter what it is. So this morning, first thing we'd like to do is join together to do our mission statement. Prior to doing that, though, we're going to ask those persons who are visiting with us, would you just stand, all visitors, Oh, wow. Praise God. We are so very glad to have you. And if you have a program with you, just look inside the, the front cover. And uh, we're going to ask you at the bottom, John, to help join us with the, with the mission statement. Congregation, please stand with our hand. Do the mission statement of Emmanuel Baptist Church. Let's say that mission statement together. We, the Emmanuel Baptist Church, we love the Lord, we love each other, and we love the lost. We are growing and flowing in love. We are a church that is Christ-centered, Bible-based, and family-focused. Now, for you visitors, we want you to know that we welcome you in a special, special way. And we want to do that for you right now. Sticks, are you ready? This is for you, visitors. Emmanuel, a place where we can dwell, sing praises to our King, and lift His holy name. Here in Emmanuel, a place where you can dwell, sing praises to our King. observe the following announcements here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. New Vision Min Outreach Ministry under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Michael Washington and Reverend Dr. Marilyn Washington will present the Women's Ministry Conference at their church located 810 West 10th Street, Donaldsonville, Louisiana on this coming Saturday, July 10th. This is going to be a free conference to all women. Registration is free and it starts at 8.30, ending at nine, with classes being held from nine until noon. The theme for this dynamic presentation is Christian women telling it like it is the Bible as our guide. We will have presentations by Dr. Claudette Trench, Reverend Irene Simon, Pastor Maggie Landry, Reverend Marilyn Washington, and the spoken word will be delivered by Pastor Carla Caesar Jones. Door prizes will be given and refreshments will be served. The conference will culminate on Sunday, July 11th, during the Women Day service at 9 a.m. The word will be given by Evangelist Melanie Kishon.
Our sister to sister meeting will be held on the third Tuesday evening at seven o'clock. This happens every third Tuesday. And we want to invite sisters everywhere to join us on Zoom. Join us on Zoom as we encourage and invite you. And uh, on Saturday, we want as many Emmanuel women present and women from all over this area who participate in Sister to Sister. We've got participants from Vachery, Laplace, Baton Rouge, and of course, Donaldsonville, Napoleonville, and many areas around. We invite you to join us for Sister to Sister, and please mark your calendars for this coming Saturday for the Women's Conference at New Vision Ministry, because we are going to go and support our sister and our friend, Minister and Reverend Marilyn Washington. So let's go out in large numbers to support her. Remember, it's, we need to continue to remember 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Let's go out and learn to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now we want you to please remember the community bike ride and vacation Bible school. Vacation Bible School will be held here at the Emanuel Baptist Church on July 14, 15, and 16. It will be here in the sanctuary as well as on Zoom. And we invite you to please come out and participate. Believe me, your children's soul as well as the souls of adults, you will be blessed at Vacation Bible School. After that, we're going to go on Saturday July 17th, for a community bike ride of hope. The bike ride will depart from the church here, and it will end at Crescent Park. The time is 8 a.m. Now, if you don't ride a bike, that's okay. Just meet us at Crescent Park so we can get together and offer prayer and fellowship for our city, our parish, our state. Pastor has often mentioned the need for this kind of event for prayer. We need prayer now. It is not playing time, it's praying time. That's a statement by Mother Collins, who is with us in the house today. It's not playing time, it's praying time. So we invite you to observe all of these announcements, especially following the bike ride on Sunday. Here at Emanuel Baptist Church, we will have friend, family, and fun day. We invite you to come out to the church on July 18th. Join us in worship, love, and peace, because where two or three are gathered in my name, God says he'll be in the midst. And I know I want to be wherever God is. And that's what we can enjoy and just bask in the love of the Lord. Yes, please observe those announcements. Remember them. This is for everyone, and it's all about love. Remember, love the Lord with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That would be the end of all war, all problems. Just love, because love is the key. That concludes the announcements for today, and we are going to continue on today uh, and invite you to get your Bibles ready, because we will hear a word from Pastor Brown. It all came to pass. Josh, Joshua 21, verses 43 through 45. So get your seatbelts buckled and get ready to take off, because a message is coming that will lead you into the atmosphere, the stratosphere, and beyond. Because as Pastor said earlier, we're going to get high on the Lord. What a way to get high. All right. And now we will have, I believe, the offering. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can we get our, give God a hand of praise even in the house? 
We're doing the two in one. We actually our usher and our deacon come forward as we raise our offering, as we are preparing our heart to give. We know uh, the word of God. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And the more you give to God, the more he gives back unto you. You say, cast your seed upon the water. Cast your bread upon the water. You shall find it return in many days. If you sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. But if you sow wonderfully, you shall reap wonderfully. Praise the Lord. I am a living witness. Praise the Lord. I trust God with my seed. And God has met every one of my needs and way beyond. Praise the Lord. As the usher coming forward, we want to ask that you will keep the North family in your prayers. Since Rose uh, North had departed uh, this life on last night, we ask that you will pray with them and for them. Ask you also to pray for Charles Dunn and his family. His sister passed on on last yesterday, so we ask that you will pray with them and for them. Continue to pray uh, for our community. Continue to pray for our children, our sons and our daughters. We're so grateful to see so many of our members who have came back on today. I'm certainly grateful to see our visitors who continue to come and visit with us. The more, praise the Lord, the earth belongs to God. Silver and gold belong to him. The cattle's upon a thousand of hill. God say, I own it all. Every good, every perfect gift cometh from above, cometh from the Father of life, whom there is no cavernous nor a shadow turning. For he said, I give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Amazingly, the seed come before the bread. If you want the bread, sow the seed. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together and run it over. With the same measure you meet, with it shall be given unto you again. Let us pray. Very, very quickly, uh, this month is a month of, 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 of gratitude. We started our Sunday school lesson off, the attitude of gratitude. And today I want to salute and I want to thank and show appreciation for all of our health care workers and those who are on the front line. Can we give God a praise for them? Fifteen months ago, we were running from COVID, but COVID was running to them, and they had to stay there, and they endured. Can we give, can we do no better than that and give God a praise for our health care workers? Come on, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. On the third, on the third Sunday, on the third Sunday, we're going to we're going to honor all of our healthcare workers, our essential workers, our Walmart uh, uh, from uh, Walmart uh, member from Walmart, uh, butcher boys, our fire department, our sheriff department, those who are on the uh, uh, front line doing this uh, this pandemic, uh, those who have kept things in order. We want to show our love and our appreciation for them to let them know that their work have not gone unnoticed. So please, on the third Sunday, if you are an essential worker, if you have been on the front line, text me, give my, give my wife your name and number. I don't know who or where you work or whatever, so please give us that so we can recognize you in that service. Another thing I want to just say, and I want to I wanna, I wanna publicly uh, 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 thank uh, Brother Wayne Landix. Wayne, will you stand up? Y'all clapping and y'all even know why I'm thanking him, man. Praise the Lord. Y'all know, y'all know had it not been for God. Amen. Uh, brother, brother, Reverend Raymond uh, Collins, I want to ask him to stand up. Uh, 
Y'all know that's a miracle too, praise the Lord, oxygen and all. But look at him, y'all. But, but that's not what I'm called, I'm, stand, I'm asking to stand for. I get a lot of calls from a lot of people uh, uh, because I'm a person of action. I don't just talk, I really, I put my feet where my mouth is. Uh, we had an a elderly lady who uh, moved from the option, option, for living, option for living to uh, the senior center complex. And uh, they wanted to charge her $800 to move. This is an elderly lady, $800 to move. Uh, they called me, and I called Raymond and Wayne, and they helped me move uh, this lady about three hours. And I just want to thank them for that. Praise the Lord. I want to shout out to them, and then I want to I want to I want to let everybody know because we're on the air, we 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 on the air, we on four different platforms. We got a lot of social organization and a whole lot of people who like to talk about what they're gonna do for people. The, listen, listen, it's time to stop talking and it's time to start doing. We got too many of our elders are, are hurting. Too many of our elders are are, are, are really. Uh, are trying to make ends meet, loose ends. And of course, it was identified when uh, we had a group of people who said that a nickel, uh, between me and my wife and daughter, of course, uh, in my house, we would be given a nickel and one penny a day, a nickel and a penny a day. And people cannot afford to do that. And if they can't afford to do that, I think we need to do whatever we can to help those people and at the same time invest in our community. Of course, I, I challenge all of our leaders. I will pay for 10, I'll pay for 20, I'll do whatever I can to help our community. It's time out to just stop talking, the time for us to start doing. And I say that and, and I really mean it. I'm just uh, 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 at a point now that we got to stop trying to be a drum major and literally start being a servant. God bless y'all. I love y'all. How many of y'all ready for the word today? Listen, this is the 4th of July. And on the 4th of July, they had fire, they got fireworks. I need to hear some noise in the house. So while you putting your hands together, as we honor two of our living legends in this house, and as uh, uh, we call for Sister Angel, Wanda Faith, Wanda August, y'all know how she is the voice of KKAY. She's from the fair city of Donaldsonville. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you your only angel of faith, Wanda August. To God be the glory, to God be the glory. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. He's the a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living, whatever men may say. Oh, it's nothing like standing 
that we're going to talk about it had such an impact on all of this. All falling through the roof, getting overheated, trying to make sure everything was done on time for Sunday morning. God is good. Oh, God's been so good to us as a church family. Oh, but guess what? He's been so good to us as a family. Oh, we're standing on the shoulders of saints. And you see, when you recognize Wayne and you recognize Raymond, all of that, they're standing on those same shoulders. Somebody had to teach y'all. And guess what? In our family, you ain't had a choice. You had to learn. And guess what? You had to pretend right, Eugene, if you didn't want her. You see, all of us come from that same family. So let, I'll tell you how the Collins and the Brooks are connected. My great-grandmother, which was Lennon Team Brooks Collins, married Rush Collins Sr. Guess what? They gave birth to some beautiful children. But we're highlighting, too, these strong men. Now, guess what? Y'all them brothers born on the same day, October 3rd. What's the likelihood of that? Different years. Guess what? They served in the military. They all had their own little talents going on. God is good. God is amazing. He is so good. Now, guess what? When they got old enough, don't you know, those two brothers married what? Two sisters. God is good. And everything is still going strong today. They are still on their honeymoon. Now, my cousin, Elois Collins Scott, she's going to join me. I'll talk about my Uncle Rush, and she's going to talk about her daddy, Lionel Collins. So these are the words written by Aisha Collins as I present to you today. Elder Rush Collins Jr., born and raised in Donaldsonville, Louisiana, is a lifelong member of the Mango Baptist Church. His favorite scripture is John 3.16, King James Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Elder Rush Collins has a deeply embedded history of dedication and service to the Emmanuel Baptist Church. He served as the secretary of the church for 24 years. He was very active in Sunday school and ensured that young church goers participated in Sunday school by using his family's car as a means of transportation. Elder Rush Collins also served on the deacon board for several years and in November of 2012, he was installed as elder of the church by Pastor Charles Brown. At an early age, he discovered his God-given talent in carpentry. As an accomplished licensed contractor, he headed the construction of eight beautiful churches. These include Mount Zion Baptist Church, Greater Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church, and Mount Triumph Baptist Church in Donaldsonville, Louisiana, Buena Vista Baptist Church in St. James, Louisiana, King David Baptist Church in Lutcher, Louisiana. Belmont Baptist Church in Labadeville, Louisiana. Pilgrim Baptist Church in Pankerville, Louisiana. And Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Modest, Louisiana. In addition, he was instrumental in leading and remodeling and beautification efforts of this sanctuary, Emmanuel Baptist Church. Elder Collins, has also built and remodeled several homes in the community and surrounding parishes. Lending his talent to the community, he constructed the Masonic Halls located in both Donaldsonville and White Castle. He is the first black licensed contractor from Donaldsonville in the state of Louisiana. Elder Rush has been married to his loving wife of 67 years, Vivian Wilson Collins. He is the father of four, Minister Raymond Collins Sr., Shari Collins, Debbie Collins, 
and Dr. Aisha Collins Noble, and grandfather to five, Dr. Latidra Collins, Courtney Collins, Dr. Wanesta Collins, Raymond Collins Jr., and Aria Noble. Not only has he been a dedicated husband, father, grandfather, and church member, he served his country in the 10th Infantry Division of the Army for two years. Elder Rush Collins is a godly man who believes in the institution of family and continues to be a dedicated member of the Emanuel Baptist Church. Our living legend, Rush, Elder Rush Collins, Jr. And at this time, I will present this to his wife, Vivian Wilson Collins. And as the history continues, Elois, come on and do your part. Another plan. 
So my dad decided, being the young and adventurous one, that if he was going to go into the service, he was going to become a paratrooper. That's right. He was going to jump out of some airplanes and do his thing. I mean, like, why not? Because I may not make it home anyway, so I might as well just do this thing. But on a serious note, his true task was to jump behind enemy lines and fight their way out. My dad learned additional skills and training while serving his country. My dad acquired a love and a passion for serving, protecting, which led him to become a deputy sheriff for the Ascension Parish Police Department, where he served the community for 44 years. My dad lives by Luke 6 and 31, treat others in which you want to be treated. He never talked down to anyone and treated everyone with the utmost respect in which everyone appreciated, even the ones he arrested. <laughs> During that time, he also served as the coolest bus driver in Ascension Parish. Oh, yes, everybody wanted to ride Bus 88. He served in that capacity for 25 years. My dad is truly my hero. Growing up, my dad could do anything. God blessed him with many gifts and talents. When my dad completed his education through veteran school, it was said that maybe he may be put out because he knew too much. Okay, so after skipping a couple of classes, he would go back and guess what? Still ace the test. <laughs> the first time my, step, my dad stepped onto a college campus was when we brought my brother to LSU, Louisiana. LSU University, yet he can run circles around individuals with a college degree. He is such a natural. I don't know of anything my father cannot do. Deputy sheriff, bus driver, carpenter, mechanic, and he even helped the family own business, which was a mobile gas station. I can recall standing in my crib, holding my bottle as my dad would get suited up for work. He would put on his holster with the gun on one side and the baton billy on the other. He had the handcuffs in the back, and the last thing he did was put that hat on, and he would reach in my crib, he would pick me up, and he would give me the biggest kiss. That was my daddy. When I became school age, I rode my daddy's school bus. My seat was right behind his. I guess by now you figured out I'm a daddy's girl. Okay? So Galatians 5, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, who my dad is, for he has displayed the spirit of love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Brother Lionel Collins, the man, the servant, my hero. Thank you so much. At this time, we present the Living Legend Award to Lionel Collins. Chief Deputy. Hallelujah. Praise the 
Lord, glory to God. Can we give God a hand of praise? Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Got a few. Praise the Lord. Are y'all ready for the word? Praise the Lord. Give me one song and just get me up there and I'm ready to go, y'all. Praise the Lord. Come on, come on, come on, y'all. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's going to be quick, y'all. All right, man, what's happening? Thank you. 
to somebody. Say, Pastor, don't take all of that. But but you say, you don't know what God done for me. You you don't know what God done for me. You you don't know my story. You can understand my glory. Come on, y'all. You have to get it ready. Come on, come on, come on, come on. CJ, put it on the board. I'm going to do this very quickly. And CJ, put it on the board. We're in Joshua. We're in Joshua chapter, chapter 21. I'm going to do it quickly, y'all. I'm not, y'all stand up. I'm not, I'm not, by the time I finish, I might be doing a benediction. But CJ, if you put it on the board, I ain't got to go up there. Thank you, uh, Pastor Lawrence. Hallelujah. Is up there? Praise the Lord. Are y'all ready for a word? Because uh, Sister Lois and uh, uh, Wanda, when they talk about those two brothers, I'm telling you, two. I didn't know what I was doing, but I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Those two. That two, that means a whole lot. Very powerful men in the body of Christ who have really labored in this vineyard, have received us as a pastor and let me know how much they love me, not just through their words, but through their action. We're in Joshua chapter 21, 43 through 45. I'm going to do it quickly, y'all. Praise the Lord. Are you ready, uh, Sister Wanda from Lee City, Texas? Wanda from Lee City, Texas, are you ready? Okay, praise the Lord. Everybody ready? Okay. And the Lord give unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers. And they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. Y'all ought to shout right there. Uh, the Lord delivered them, delivered all their enemies unto them. The Lord delivered into their hand, I'm sorry. There fail not aught any good thing which the Lord has spoken unto the house of Israel. I need y'all to shout these last four words. One, two, three. All came to pass. Hallelujah. Look at another man. Say, neighbor. I'm a living witness. I've been walking with God for a long time. And I want you to know it all came to pass. Come on, for those of you who've really been walking with him as you've been doing your spiritual journey, can you please shout and say, it all came to pass? Hallelujah. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. I'm going to do this very quickly. Uh, uh, it all came to pass. It all came to pass. Today we, we celebrate a significant day in our history. We celebrate the 4th of July, Independence Day. But the truth and the reality in 1776 is when it was initiated. 1776, it couldn't have been our Independence Day. Because in 1863, the Emancipation of Proclamation was signed and delivered on January 1st of 1963. But yet still, that was not our Independence Day. Because for two and a half years, somewhere around Galveston, Texas, because we didn't have the technology we have today, and so our people were still in bondage, in captivity. But when they got the news in Gabberton, Texas, June, June 19th, that's our independence day. We celebrated that. Amazingly, uh, they, they, they offered or said that they were going to give them 40 acres in a mule. 40 acres in a mule. Any of y'all got yours? Because I ain't got mine. But they were set free with no education, no economic path. They had no 
our education whatsoever. And so they were depending on their 40 acres in a mule. How can I be free with no job, with no education, no, no, no economics whatsoever, what I can do? They promised me this. But I believe, people of God, that as we are sitting in this place today, even though they didn't give us what they promised us, somebody had enough sense to realize who the source of their blessing. Somebody had enough sense to go to God because when God makes a promise, it will come to pass. Y'all ain't clapping like y'all are not persuaded. He may not come when you want him. Elder Rush Cowling and Chief Deputy, I call him, Brynell Cowling. They can tell you a thing or two because they've seen a thing or two. They can tell you where you at today is not where we was. We went to God and we went to God in prayer. And everything we asked God, it all came to pass. Now, it did not come when we wanted it. But I'm already sure Brother Lionel probably prayed, prayed for a million dollars. But God said, if I give you the million dollars now, Brother Lionel, you ain't going to be able to handle it. But over the course of time, I believe Lionel can tell you, I had millions of dollars because it all came to pass. I, I believe, people of God, that God knows what we need and when we need it. We just got to learn how to wait on God's timetable. And there are some things in our life we prayed for that, that you wanted and God didn't give it to you. You prayed for a man, and, and, and listen, I heard the story. Uh, a lady said, Pastor, that's going to be my wife, my husband. I, I prayed for that man, and that man got married to somebody else. You might have prayed for a woman, and, and God didn't give you that woman. God knows what you need. Because there are some people who claim a uh, 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 husband and wife, and, and some people you, you fall in love with, and you look at you look at from their outward appearance. But I don't know about you, but I see some people, and I got to say, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You know what I needed. Yo, yo, am I, am I, 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 I believe God knows exactly what you need. The only way we are not going to get what God has for us is in Hebrew chapter number 6, verse 12. I'm going quickly, y'all. Hebrew chapter 6, verse 12, it says, Be not followers of those who are slothful. Don't follow those who are lazy and slack, who are complacent, who are just satisfied. He said, But follow those who by faith and patience inherit the promise. Did y'all hear what I said? There are two ways we're going to get the promise. You got to have faith, and you got to have patience. Some people believe God, but some people just don't want to wait on God. And sometimes we try to go ahead of God. But it's faith in. Somebody said faith in patience. Listen, the woman got to go through nine months before she get her deliverance. And why in the world you think that when you talk to God today, this thing going to come into fruition? God said, have faith and then believe me. Some of us right now are on the brink of a breakthrough. We are on the brink of, 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 of that which we have been waiting for. But some of us, we have, we have aborted it because we don't have patience. I'm in the 21st chapter. I got to go quickly. I'm in the 21st chapter. And uh, y'all remember in the 14th chapter, it was Caleb. He's 85 years old. And uh, Caleb goes to Joshua and says, listen, I want this mountain. Uh, 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 I know it's fenced in, and I know they got some giants in the land. And uh, everybody telling me I'm too old. I'm not going to be able to do it. I know a lot of people, uh, Elder Rush Collin and the rest of them, they heard that. Y'all too old, and you can't do it. Elder Rush Collin, I'm telling you, he's a giant in a house. Uh, listen, I believe Elder can preach a sermon, y'all. I, I, matter of fact, I know he could. And, and people are telling him he's too old. And, and, and Caleb said, yes, I'm 85 years old, but I want this. I want this mountain. And don't try to fence me in. Don't put limitation on me. You got to stop letting people put limitation on you and tell you what you do. 
people. How many of y'all know you can do all things through Christ? Don't fence, just somebody, don't fence me in. Don't box me in. Don't put no limitation on me. Told him he was too old and they got giants in there. Who got to put a giant? If God be for me, who can be? And these two sons of Joseph around the 17th chapter of Joshua, they come and say, listen, we got a land, but you ain't giving me enough. Come there with pride and arrogance. I ain't got enough, Rose. So Joshua said, okay, you want more? Go work for it. <laughs> they, they, they said, well, if we go, they got giants over there. See, we want stuff, but we want people to give it to us. We got to get out of this give me line and be get into the line and go get what God has for us. We talked about that on last week in the 18th chapter. There were seven, seven of the tribe who had not possessed their land. Seven tribes. Y'all, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just doing it this way because I got to be sure. Seven of them, uh, Sister Valentine, they didn't even go get it. Joshua said, y'all better go and get your blessing. You, you need to go and claim your inheritance. And matter of fact, I told y'all last week, he said, go to the ants. And consider her ways and be wise. If y'all want to learn a lesson, I told y'all, y'all all have a laboratory at home. Your laboratory, all you got to do is drop some cake on the ground. I'm talking about young people. And leave the cake there. I promise you, those ants will come together. They don't have an overseer. They don't have a ruler nor a god. All they got is a queen ants. Nobody ain't got to tell them to go get the bread. Nobody ain't got to tell them to go get the meat in the hall in the summer and gather food in the harvest. What you're saying, Pastor? I'm glad you had. Listen, people of God, we're going to get old one day. We can't just spend all we got today and don't forget, forget about tomorrow. Go to the ants and consider her ways. She took care of today and tomorrow. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so here we are in the 21st chapter. I'm going. Uh, and uh, the uh, Levites, they go to Joshua. And they wanted their possession. Notice they, they, they went to the right people. They were in shallow, y'all. If you read your Bible, it's, it's there, they're in the house of God. They're in the right place. And their precept was based on the laws of Moses. The Levites, of course, if you read in Exodus chapter 32, verse 26, uh, when Moses came down the mountain with the Ten Commandments, those folk were having a party. Those, those folk were having it going on. You know, they told Aaron, Moses got up there. He's too long. He done got lost. Where he at? And uh, 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 Moses, uh, we need to make us a god. And you know what they did? They took their gold and, you know, they took their Cadillac. They took their rim. They put all of this and throw it in the fire. And they began to see a molten calf and they began to worship it. Moses come down the uh, mountain and, and cast the stone down. And he cried out and he said, who's on the Lord's side? It was the Levite. Levite was in charge of the worship service. There was in charge the temple service. All the priests, all the priests was a Levite. Let me make sure I said this right. All the priests were Levite, but all Levite wasn't the priest. Did I say that right? Everybody go to church. Well, every Christian go to church. But everybody go to church ain't a Christian. Did I say something? And so these people were handling their spiritual need. I got to go quickly, y'all. Uh, they were handling the spiritual needs. And of course, uh, Joshua ain't told them go work for it. Joshua didn't tell them anything. He said, listen, there were 48 cities among those tribes. And he says, you just go ahead on and possess what God has given you. Why? Because the Levite or the priests were handling the worship service. They was the one who would stand in the presence of God once a year, the, uh, the great high priest. They would stand in and intercede for the people of God. And so in other words, they didn't have to work. It was those who were, ta they were taking care of their spiritual need, and those who, whose spiritual need was met, they took care of their material need. I just want to pause right there because some of y'all give the pastor two pennies and think that he don't need all that. But when I take care of your spiritual needs, and I'm not just talking to me, and I'm not talking about money, y'all know that, but when a person take care of your spiritual need, you ought to at least bless him in the material realm. 
I had too many shouts on that. Let me say it again. <laughs> it's amazing. You want mother ox that thread out of his corn. A labor worthy is higher. And so they give him 48. But notice the text. Uh, he says, for them, or if you want it, you got to go and possess it. Two things. You got to possess it and you got to dwell in it. You want the territory. You want more. He says, I need you to possess it. What you mean possess it, Pastor? You got to step in, step out, and go and take. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. They, they were already on the other side uh, of their promise. They were on the other side of their blessing. But in order for them to get it, they got to step in, step out, and go and take. Y'all still ain't getting it. <laughs> Let me just do it again. Uh, the, the Jordan was overflowing during the harvest time. And uh, uh, this time, it was impossible for them to move and navigate on it. I told y'all, in order for you to be able to take your territory, you got to have faith. And so what they had to do, they had to step in by faith. And then they had to step out and take over. How many of y'all know we walk by faith? You got to take possession Man, I got to do this quickly. Uh, could I do this, y'all? Uh, a young boy graduated, uh, Sister Wanda, and uh, his dad was rich. Not a lot of money. And the boy uh, 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 knew that his, his friends were getting cars and they were getting sport cars. He didn't know his daddy was going to get him something bad. During graduation, his daddy presented him a gift. It was wrapped up. And y'all know what it was? It was a bomb. The boy was highly disappointed at his rich dad. His dad told him, hey, son, what I need you to do? What you need me to do? I need you to read this Bible from cover to cover. And I'm telling you, everything that you need that is pertaining to life and godliness is in there. If you want to be rich, it's in the word of God. I need you to possess the word. But too many of us, we got libraries, and the library is on the shelf. But how many of us possess the library? And so the daddy said, read it from cover to the cover. I'm going to close on this. I'm going to do the other two and I'm going to just shut it out because I know y'all looking at my screen. Listen. Say, he says, I want you to read it from cover to cover. His dad did something and put something in that Bible. Uh, every section of the Bible, the dad put a thousand dollars. Every book that is in the Bible, he put a thousand dollars. Every book. In Genesis, all the way to the book of Deuteronomy. There were five books. In Joshua, all the way to Esther, there were 12 books. Y'all keeping up? In uh, uh, the book of Job, all the way to Song of Solomon, there were five books. From Isaiah to Daniel, there were five books. From Hosea to Malachi, there were five books. If y'all do the math, there were 39 books. He had $39,000. Flip over to the New Testament in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there was 4,000. In the book of Acts, which is a historical book, there was another 1,000. In the book of Roman, all the way to Hebrew, there was 14 books. In the book of James, all the way to 3rd John and Jude, there was 7 books. And if you look at the book of Revelation, there was another book. Y'all know how many that was? There were 27 books. So when you put 39 times 27, y'all know how much he got? 66 one. Come on, class. Let's go to even the answer. $66,000. Can I tell y'all what you need is in the book? All you got to do is read it and take possession. And then dwell therein. Abide in that word. And let the word abide in you. And you will ask what you will. And it shall be done. Don't just say my action and ain't got no word. I'm going. He asked for territory. No. Uh, uh, notice uh, he says in verse 45, the Bible said 44, God had given them rest. Uh, not only he gave them rest, but uh, the reality of the whole situation, he delivered the enemies in their hands. And uh, the enemy couldn't even stand against him. This is for somebody today who, who, who bothering yourself about who don't like you. This is for those who uh, uh, are running around here wondering uh, uh, who, who talking about you. How many of y'all know the Bible said God will cause us to triumph? 
and to make manifest his saving knowledge in every place. Now, when they give Jesus a triumphant entry, matter of fact, when he did it, y'all know what it was. It was a preview of a coming attraction because a triumph is not what you do for a victory. A triumph is what you do after the victory. See, what God did with you and I, me, he said he prepared a table before us in the presence of you got to stop trying to run around your enemy. You got to stop worrying about your enemy. God said, I'm going to put a table there, and I want you to sit. I'm going to bless you in spite of your enemy. How many of y'all know he will cause you to triumph? And I believe that when God called us to triumph, that Elder Rush Collins and Chief Deputy, I tell you what they can do. They'll look back over their own life and they begin to testify that there had not failed one word of his good promise which he promised to the children of Israel. I know what you're saying. Pastor, that was Israel. Well, Israel simply means who God governed. And if God govern your life, God is talking about you and he's talking about me. He said, there's no word that had failed. I need you to open your mouth and say, it all came to pass. What came to pass? If you were sick, you read in the word, by your stripes, I am healed. If you were broke and didn't have a dime, you read somewhere that he's your Jehovah Jireh. He will supply all of your needs. You got children and grandchildren. He said, wealth and riches shall be in your house. You read in the word that you're the head and not the tail. You a ball and bop beneath. Can anybody shout and say it all? It all. It all. In the prayer. Amen. 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 The doors of the church are open. Amen. It may be a candidate for baptism. The time now is to come. Come. Come to Jesus. Come to him today. It may be one right now who's looking for a church home. Time now is to come. Come on, sister. Come on. Come on. There may be another one. Come to Jesus. Come on. The time now is to come. Tomorrow is not promised to us. For the day, we know not the day or the hour. Only God knows. But come to Jesus today. Is there another one? Hallelujah. If you take that one step, Christ will walk with you all the way. You have won it all for me. Death cannot hold you down. There may be one who who may have backslid. We serve a forgiving God. Yes, you are we serve a forgiving God. Seated in majesty. Come to him today. Our 
final plea. Praise the Lord. Before, uh, before Brother Reverend Lawrence give us a benediction of word, uh, uh, Brother Dale, say something and we're going to leave. But uh, Bridget, uh, for those of y'all who don't know again, y'all need to be mindful what y'all say about me. Let me say it again. You know, y'all say, Pastor look crazy with this robe on. Y'all better be mindful. But y'all, Bridget, Bridget, uh, Bridget comes. And, uh, she says she want to make Emmanuel Baptist Church her home. She said, uh, I, "I want here. I want you to be my spiritual daddy." But she's my biological sister. Y'all be mindful. We give God a hand of praise, even right now. Bridget, we welcome you with open arms there. God bless you. I'm so glad we are covering you in the blood of Jesus. We're going to get with you with our women department and make sure that if there's any need, we certainly will need it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Death can't hold him down. I feel Hallelujah. And you see that in see that. my majesty. See that in my It's just good. Majesty. It's just good. Oh, Let me say that one more time. It's just good <laughs> to be an amen. I've had a wonderful time in the Lord. I, I just don't know what you come for on this Lord day. But I just come to tell the Lord. Lord, I cannot pay you, Lord, but I can tell the Lord, God bless you. Father, we thank you one more time, always in your presence and always in your sight. We thank you for the mighty word of God that was delivered. We thank you for one of yours coming back home to your church, dear God. As we close, dear God, we just thank you for the service. We thank you for everyone in the sound of my voice. And we bless your name, dear God, for one more day in your sanctuary. We all stand for the benediction. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds together while we absent from one another. May we all respond by saying, amen. Right, right.